Hello, everyone. This is Brian May with our Coro. Thank you for joining our joint webinar with our friends at uh, Payroll for Construction and Foundation Software. We're going to let folks uh, get into the session. We see everyone piling in now. We'll probably begin a couple minutes past the top of the hour, but just wanted to welcome you. I'll be back soon to give you an update. Thank you. Hey, welcome everyone. For those of you just joining, this is Brian May with our Coro. Uh, thank you very much for joining our presentation today. We're allowing some additional time for folks to pile in. We had uh, quite quite a registration list for this session. So uh, bear with us. I'll keep you updated. We'll probably start just a couple minutes past the top of the hour. Thank you again. For those of you just joining us, my name is Brian May with Arcoro. Thank you for attending our webinar this morning uh, or this afternoon, depending upon where you're at. Uh, we're gonna get started in just a couple more minutes. Uh, we're trying to give everybody time to, to get in and get settled. You might notice in the handout section, there are some handouts available for you if you wanted to download those now. Uh, they're there in your control panel. I'll do some more housekeeping here in just another minute or two. Thank you again for joining. All right. Well, it's time to get started. Hello, everyone. And uh, thank you. Thank you for taking time uh, over the lunch hour to spend with us. This is Brian May. I'm with our Coro. And today we're going to be discussing some challenges construction companies face when it comes to workforce, HR, timekeeping, payroll. Uh, this presentation is brought to you by Foundation Software, Payroll for Construction, our Coro, and Exact Time. Uh, everyone has been placed on mute for the duration of the call. We want to hear from you, so please voice your questions at any time during the session. Just type them into the question section of the webinar. When you see something, say something, and we'll definitely address those at the end of today's session. Also, you'll notice there are some handouts available for you in the control panel. Uh, you can download those at any time, but they are there for you to take with you. Now, this is a lunch and learn. So for those of you that stay with us to the end, please be sure to watch for an email. You will get a Uber Eats gift card. So lunch is on us. Hey, thanks again for joining. All right, joining me today is Alex Gray. Alex is a regional sales manager for Payroll for Construction. Alex has served the construction industry for four years now, and he specializes in serving commercial union and prevailing wage contractors. Alex works closely with companies that employ 
hundreds of contractors, uh, hundreds of in, employees, uh, and have satellite offices and, and work in multiple states. His uh, main focus is ensuring that companies that use payroll for construction are running their complex payroll smoothly, efficiently, and on time. So welcome, Alex, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Brian. Excited uh, that we get to show everyone the uh, the great products offerings we have with the partnership here and uh, also looking forward to just being able to go through the presentation here today. And thanks again for having me. Yeah, no, it's great. And I'll welcome you back here a little later in the presentation. Um, so thanks again for standing by and we look forward to what you have to share. Wonderful. All right, everyone. Again, I'm Brian May. I'm the Vice President of Channel Development for our Coro. I've been with our Coro for almost 24 years. Some of you may have worked with me or, or caught any number of my HR presentations online or in person at local and national association events. Um, I am certainly a construction HR enthusiast and enjoy helping contractors overcome complex HR issues, HR and people challenges. We do that with software and services. So again, thank you all for sharing your time with us today. Our Coro and Foundation, uh, you know, we add up to a very strong value proposition together. We bring together financials, payroll, and, and the HR function uh, to solve key business challenges by providing higher visibility into your projects, people, and productivity. Throughout today's session, we're going to refer to challenges contractors face. We know we have many of them today. Um, and and really, as as we you know, as as things the 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 environment changes rapidly in the construction industry, contractors are continuing to digitize their operations with platforms like Foundation Software uh, and our Coro to really displace antiquated uh, manual and paper based legacy tools uh, with solutions that address the construction lifecycle from end to end. Now, our Coro is a cloud-based platform that removes the paper and manual processes to simplify the employee life cycle, while foundation software is an accounting package that can help you manage your projects, financials, estimating, safety, and, and of course, uh, payroll for construction, all your payroll needs. You know, even in the wake of COVID, over 73% of contractors are still dealing with continued supply chain disruptions, inflationary concerns, and workforce shortages. Companies that are nimble, tech savvy, and strategically focused should be able to weather obstacles, differentiate from competitors, and really prosper in 2023. Now, despite price increases and increased labor shortages, the construction outlook remains positive due to recent and future federal funding measures, as well as continued implementation of productivity increasing software like our Coro and Foundation. You know, the good news is there's light at the end of the tunnel with respects to supply chain and material costs. Material and bid prices peaked at the end of 2021, early 22. And according to Richard Branch uh, with Dodge Data, inflation should start to cool on the backside of 23. And I was just reading an article on, on CNBC this morning and they echoed that. It's, we're seeing signs that inflation is starting to cool. Uh, so that should continue to improve. I mean, that's good, but you know, not so much on the workforce side of the house. As you can see, what this chart illustrates is job openings. Now we're not talking about project starts, we're talking about job vacancies and they are nearing record levels. So although supply chain and material costs um, and, and inflation are gonna continue to ease, the availability of workers continues to be a major challenge for the industry. By the end of 2025, this Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act will have created another 461,000 new construction jobs. Now, according to Anirban Basu, the ABC chief economist, as construction spending increases, it's just further exacerbating the workforce shortages at a time when the industry is struggling to, to staff to current capacity. Barring any additional delays in appropriation process, the biggest gains are expected here in 23. A shortage of skilled labor lingers as the single, single uh, biggest issue facing the industry. 
And it's going to require new approaches to how you recruit and onboard and train and compensate your people. Roughly 40% of the construction workforce is expected to retire over the next decade. So having the right recruitment and training programs in place is crucial to keep the job engine running strong. I want you to take note of this quote from Richard Branch. Again, he's the chief economist at Dodge Data. Many of us are gonna to need to make a change to our HR people approach because there's no real significant workforce improvement coming over the next five years. So in essence, what got us here may not get us there. That is, barring any technological changes or productivity enhancing tools. Now, of course, Richard Branch is talking about new construction technologies like robotics and automation and in productivity enhancing softwares like the ones that our core and foundation bring to the table. If you're starting to think through your current HR processes and where you might improve, consider the workflows on screen. For many of us, these HR workflows remain paper and manual intensive. Uh, they represent the roadblocks your current team struggle with when it comes to finding more time in their day. When we get together uh, next, we're going to talk about um, other workflows and how our Coros cloud-based HR software can help you better be positioned to find and onboard the right people. Today, I'm going to put a slightly different slant on this discussion. We're going to look at two of the most challenging functions for accounting and payroll and HR teams, and that's new hire paperwork and time tracking. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with our Coro, uh, we are in the business of simplifying the way contractors hire, manage, and grow their workforce. We have been in business now for 25 years, and we have over 10,000 clients. There are some 11.7 million workers in the US construction industry. We see 1.2 million workers hitting our site every day. So it's truly the construction industry that's anointing us the number one choice for HR and construction. Our software, it's modular. It spans the entire employee life cycle from hire to retire. So on the front end, we're helping organizations that are leveraging our applicant tracking and onboarding solution attract, find, hire, and onboard great people. In the manage modules, here is where we're helping those organizations in really capturing all employee data, um, including our benefits administration software, time tracking, and compensation management. On the growth side, this is where we're setting expectations, helping customers set expectations and goals with employees, provide timely feedback, support that, with great learning plans to help people get better in their current role or prepare for that future role just in time uh, for, for that challenge ahead. Succession planning is really that reporting module that um, looks at the performance of individuals within the organization uh, individually or by department, division, or otherwise, helping you identify strengths and opportunities and also those that may be ready for that challenge, that next challenge, which again, can they can prepare for that just with a great learning plan through our learning management system. So end-to-end -end employee lifecycle software, it is, mo um, it is uh, modular, so you can kind of pick and choose where you're starting. Some of our customers that are with us today might be using one or two HR modules. They might be on the exact time, time tracking solution but we can grow with you and scale with you over time as your needs change. Now, um, there's lots of HR software out there in the marketplace. What really separates us from the competition, it, it's our construction ecosystem. So the relationships that we're building with uh, the ERPs like foundation and the payroll solutions, well, there, there is no better payroll solution than payroll for construction. Um, you know, we're building uh, those relationships, collaborating with the associations, and with that, it helps us gain a unique understanding of the compliance challenges faced by contractors. So we bring in the partners, we build out the product extensions and the integrations uh, to make our system work well uh, with these others and, and uh, certainly help contractors tackle these workforce challenges that 
might be keeping you up at night. Okay, so I'm gonna break away from the live presentation here. We're gonna just take a look at the a demonstration of our new hire onboarding and time software. And then afterwards, we're gonna pass things over to Alex to, to share how this all works with uh, payroll for construction and, and uh, foundation accounting. Let's, let's go ahead and we will start with a little demonstration of onboarding. Um, to get this started, you know, uh, onboarding packets are sent out to employees or new hires either before day one or on day one, and they are aligned by position and location. So the right forms, policies, and information can be collected simply based on position and location. Now, when uh, Tom here received his, in, his, his username, he set up a password, jumped in, and he was welcomed by, you know, some videos and branding from the company. Often we see like an open me first type of document uh, telling him what to prepare for on his first day and who he might get support from if he's got questions about completing that onboarding paperwork. Next, he's able to go right into his paperwork and he's presented with a menu uh, that is all grayed out. Now, Tom has been working on this for a little while and he's saved where he's at. So you can see the blue um, uh, areas, they, that's where all of the completed information uh, has been captured. And those gray steps are steps that he still needs to do. So the software does convert nicely to Spanish. Um, and, and from there, we're asking the employees to go and fill out uh, the information critical to onboarding. So we control all the federal and state forms, I-9s, voluntary surveys, federal and state W-4s. Uh, and then you can build out additional configurable fields here, you know, I'm asking about uniform size and shift schedule and, you know, favorite birthday treat, maybe a little cute, but uh, certainly something that, that is nice to have. From there, filling out all those federal and state tax forms, I-9s, collecting direct deposit. This can be required or it doesn't have to be. And then we can collect up to five bank accounts or pay cards. But if we're integrating with foundation, you're gonna to wanna to restrict that to three because during the, the import process, uh, we're gonna only be able to pass over three direct deposits. Now, from there, the policies are aligned and then employees are asked to go in and open the policy, review it, and then they're able to acknowledge it. So they can't just click to acknowledge, uh, they, they can download, they can print the, the policies, uh, but then from, from there, they need to go down to the, they need to read and review the policies. At the bottom, they'll find that I acknowledge button. And uh, this is, I probably shouldn't have picked such a lengthy policy here. If your policies are this long, they're too long. Uh, <laughs> anyways, once I've now acknowledged, uh, it's time and date stamped, and that's all reportable for you. We can build in additional custom forms. The employee then uh, is ready once everything is blue. You can't submit an incomplete packet. So once they, they completed everything, they're able to electronically sign. And um, now the back office is notified along with anybody else about that new hire. So where we're at now is really in the administrative control panel. And here we're on the new hire dashboard showing us our manager action items, our incomplete new hires. There's Tom Maroney. That's who we were just looking at. So Tom has yet to complete his paperwork. Here under manager action items, we can see John has. So we've probably been notified already by the system that John's paperwork's done, but most, most likely John's just staring at us and he's got his IDs ready for I-9 verification. So that authorized I-9 signer can just sign in, can go ahead and uh, complete section two of the I-9. So based on how John filled out section one of the I-9, the list A, B, and C documents are all going to flex according to the way that, that uh, John filled out the I-9. So you're only gonna be accepting documents that, that are appropriate, helping you maintain compliance. Now, once you've selected a document that, that John is presenting to you, if I've got an image to share, I'm going to. So for the inexperienced I-9 signer, you can see exactly what data to grab off of that document. You can then enter it into the fields, acknowledge that you've inspected it and it's accurate, and then you can move on in the, 
process of completing this employee. This next step, additional info. You saw that we could build configurable fields for the employee to fill out. You can also build configurable fields for your manager or I-9 signer to complete. So here, these configurable fields are collecting some additional information about the employee. And, oh, we made a mistake there. Okay, so, so now um, I see this taking the shape of a checklist, right? Are they getting any assets? Do we get their physical back? It's just doing a checkup from the neck up and making that I-9 signer think through completing this new hire because one of the other challenges we, we hear so frequently is, you know, we don't always get all the steps done. So this system is helping you get complete and accurate packets with not all, all of the difficult to read handwriting, missing forms, policies, and whatnot, and also ensuring that your I-9 signer is, is doing it in a compliant manner. Once it's all done, both parties electronically sign and all of the documents are stored in the electronic filing cabinet for safekeeping. So here, here's James Ramey. Uh, James is a, a new hire, and I can see in his file, if I have permission to see, um, I can see all of those documents and forms that we've collected, along with all the information. I can, of course, download or print these. We try to avoid that, right? Um, and in addition, I could download a complete employee file if needed. So everything's here for safekeeping. I can even export all I-9s in one, in one click. So really simple. There's so much more to onboarding. I'm happy to, to get deeper into that with you when you're ready. We can do a demo there of, of onboarding. So just let me know. Um, next, we're gonna look at exact time. And so this is our premier time tracking solution. A uh, couple, couple notes about exact time before we get into this, this quick little demo. Uh, exact time is a native mobile app and it's found in the Apple or Google Play stores. Um, it, it works online or offline. So no matter if you're in the most remote areas, uh, the, the time, time can be tracked. And then once uh, that device comes into contact with cell reception, that time is, is automatically synced uh, back, to, back to the back office so that you always have time uh, as quickly as, as we can make it available to you. So let's go ahead and look at this uh, quick little demo. Now, the app can be loaded to a personal device or a shared device. Em employees are provided a pin to access the, uh, access the timekeeper. And, you know, it's got a simple interface, right? Green to go, red to stop. Once we press go, we're presented with our projects and cost codes. Um, the project we are closest to based on geofence is gonna come up first in the list along with the associated cost codes. Quick little forward facing photo and maybe uh, some compliance questions. These are some questions, right? Because we've just come out of this COVID environment. Uh, they could be configured on or off. If I'm outside the geofence, I can still be allowed to clock in, just need to, to provide a little information as to why. So just like that, Steve is clocked in for the day and he's ready for work. Um, what if I need to change my location or cost code? Well, I'm Steve, I sign back in, it's green, it's always green to go. I am now at Morningside, I'm now doing some curbing work, quick forward facing photo to prevent buddy punching. And then of course, this was not my first clock in, so here we go. End of the day, now I'm ready to clock out. Steve just goes ahead, clicks the stop button, and at clock out, we're gonna do the forward facing photo again to prevent buddy punching, and now some more compliance challenges or questions. Were you injured at work? Did you get all your meals and breaks? And then sign off on that time card for the day. There are some additional features that employees have at their disposal. So we'll sign in one more time here and look at the employee view. But here in this little, in this little sidebar, I can go in and review all my time for the week and individual time cards. And you can allow the employee to go in and approve their time card and sign off on the whole week as, as a first layer of approval process. Now, some of us are having supervisors clock for their crew. Uh, let me show you that because that, that works as well. So I'm signing in as a supervisor. I'm gonna clock for my crew for a particular project, a task, and even equipment tracking. Everybody's here. 
we're now at Am Amatosa and we're going to do some cleanup. We're running that Bosch jack jackhammer and we're clocked in. So all four crew members are now clocked in. And if I need to, I can go ahead and adjust individual crew members. Maybe I'm going to uh, have this individual do some different work, like some demolition. And just like that, James has been assigned to some demolition work. So really easy. Now, supervisors have some additional um, uh, items that are configurable, like field notes, where if I see something, I can say something and report it back to the office. Um, here, in this case, Steve injured himself. I can take a photo, do voice notes, text notes. And in this case, I'm going to provide the office with a little description. You'll see this in a moment as we get to the administrative view, because you're going to have that available real time. Also in the site hub, I'm going to be able to see who's clocked in, um, where they're at, what they're doing. Again, this is the supervisor view, even an estimate on current, current off, uh, hourly labor cost, temperature, map of the area, hospitals, restaurants, and, and the like. Okay, I'm going to just pause for a second. We are now uh, in Exact Time Connect. So this is that administrative view for the back office team or for your managers. Here within the Exact Time Connect module, you can see I'm, at, I'm looking at Amistosa, the project. I can see the current conditions, who's on site and clocked in and what they're doing. And then I can also see at the bottom here, there's that, that field note that John John had provided us. So really great and uh, the opportunity for us to, to stay in tune with that, what's happening in the field. Time cards are easy to review for errors. Uh, here, I'm just gonna go into that time card view and I can see uh, for this pay period, I've got a number of exceptions that are sticking out to me. And so I can jump in and I can see what these exceptions are and I can start correcting those that time. So in this case, you know, as I review Aaron's time, I'm going to see that Aaron is missing uh, an, an out punch, right? So that stop punch is easy to, to fix. I can just put in the time that Aaron did clock out, save it, and I just corrected that error. On this little side window here, I'm going to jump into Jesse. I noticed that Jesse, uh, Jesse's outside the geofence. So I can, I can jump in and see exactly where Jesse was when he was clocking in or clocking out. Geofence is an option that you can uh, enable. And in this case, you know, the yellow pin shows where our project site is. The red pins show where the start and stop punches were. And if we drill in a little closer here, uh, we can see that Jesse, Jesse's actually outside the geofence at the archery range and golf course. So some really great features there with the exact time solution. There's much more that we, we can jump into should you wanna uh, do, do a demo, just let, let me know and we'll, I'll be happy to, to help you there. Okay, so let's, let's go back to the presentation. Now, as we onboard new hires, this is the first integration point for uh, our partnership with Foundation and Payroll for Construction. We are able to output that new hire data in a formatted flat file. And that flat file can, is configured to the import utility, the Foundation import utility, to help you quickly import that data to get new hires set up in payroll. Okay, so the challenge we're overcoming there with the onboarding piece, no difficult to read handwriting, no missing forms, no missing policies, information is complete, and now you can avoid additional uh, compliance and data entry errors because you're able to import that data into foundation to get those payroll records set up and started. So speed, it's much faster, and of course, um, you, you don't have to, to focus on the mechanics of the, the HR process. From an exact time perspective, um, we can look in, help you look into foundation, pull your people, projects, and cost codes right into exact time. Now you can align your workers and crews, and, and from there, time can be tracked. Once time is approved, weekly, biweekly, whatever, whatever we're doing, uh, now you're able just to 
export that time. It is configured to be consumed by the foundation import utility. And uh, now that time data can be pushed into payroll so that pay calculations can be done quickly. All right, now with that, I wanna welcome back Alex Gray. And Alex, uh, maybe you wanna share with us a little bit more about the foundation software, again, what we're gonna do with those imports. And uh, again, thanks for the help here. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So I'll pick it up here right where we left off. I'll first go through and show um, those on the call here today how um, we are able to then utilize that import utility tool to then pull this into your foundation software, payroll for construction database, whatever you may be using uh, our family of products here in the office there. So went ahead and start sharing my screen here. Everyone is now viewing the foundation import utility tool. So after we have that configured file pulled out of our Coral's onboarding system, you will then go ahead access this import utility tool. We're using the employees importer. Go ahead, log in with your username, your password, select that database, then simply go ahead, select that file that we had pulled out of the Arcoro system. Then once I have that file selected, I'll click preview and validate source here. I'll then go ahead, since we're bringing in those employees, go ahead and pull down the record type of employees here. Then before this information is ever brought into your system, what the import utility tool will force you to do is to go ahead and make sure that our data is validated. Go ahead, valid, validate that data here. The importer will let us know if we had any errors. If we did have any errors, would highlight those line items for us on the tool here in sort of our Excel sheet layout on the grid, but don't have any errors with my data here. All right, wanna go ahead and pull it into the system, click import. 17 employees have now been onboarded and set up inside my foundation accounting database, my payroll database, whatever you may be utilizing here us um, for that family of products there. So now what I'll do here is since we covered the importer tool, I'll go ahead and jump into the payroll service where this information is actually going once their employees have been onboarded inside that Arcoro system and we're pulling them into our actual payroll for construction database here. So payrollforconstruction.com. Uh, we are an online payroll service provider just for the construction industry. Uh, have over 16 years of experience here. We're processing payroll in all 50 states. And what makes us different out there from like an ADP, like a paychex is we're only dealing with the construction industry. Uh, we're only the main clients, union, prevailing wage, uh, working in multi-state, multi-localities. Those are having pain points. What's going on with our employees or working across multiple job sites. We have the experience in the construction industry. We're only processing construction payrolls on a daily basis. We understand the pain points that come with that construction payroll. Another thing that makes us different is we're powered by foundation software with, they have over 35 years of experience in the construction industry. Foundation has that full job cost ERP accounting system, whether you're using them for the accounting system and integrating the payroll service directly inside that foundation system, or whether you're using just payroll for construction where you're accessing a watered down version of foundation, but can integrate with those that are using maybe QuickBooks, uh, the Sage products out there, uh, other accounting packages, we can stand alone or directly integrate with your current accounting package or that foundation accounting package. Then the last point here, at our core, we're gonna be a, a third party payroll service for you. So we'll pay your employees via check or direct deposit, handle all the tax filings and payments for your team, then also automate reports like job costing, certified payroll, gonna be able to create electronic and print formats of those certified reports, and also EEO minority compliance reporting um, for those that need it. Also gonna have electronic and print versions available for those minority compliance reports inside the system. What do we do? Again, we're gonna be that construction specific payroll service provider here. So no matter if you're working across multiple states or for my contractors that are working in states like Ohio, like Kentucky, that hey, my, co my employee here could work across three different cities all in one day and has three different taxing jurisdictions that he falls under with those local taxing requirements. So multi-state, multi-locality, not an issue with our service. We'll be able to have the system 
automatically track this information, assign the, uh, the correct corresponding taxing jurisdictions, and be able to then automate the calculations for us. Then also too, my contractors out there that are having government projects, prevailing wage projects where, hey, we're paying our employees our private commercial rate, but for this prevailing wage job, we're gonna have to go ahead and pay them above scale. We can automate the pay rates for that prevailing wage work, have the system automatically assign the correct rate of pay, so you're not going through updating each individual employee's rate of pay on that time card. Then also with that prevailing wage job or uh, union work there as well, those fringe calculations there uh, with that prevailing wage job, you're going to have to offer the employees some sort of fringe benefits per that contract where we're going to be able to also set up those fringe calculations inside the system. Then also too, the next point with that prevailing wage fringe reduction. So for my contractors out there that are also maybe already offering their employees some benefits where, hey, this prevailing wage job is requiring us to offer $12 an hour in benefits for my example here, but we're already offering these employees seven. We can go ahead, reduce that fringe down by the $5. So you're not overpaying when it comes to that fringe for that prevailing wage job for our employees there. Then also the last item, what will handle workers' compensation. So we'll get your workers' compensation policy set up inside the system, it can be tracked by the type of work performed. So have that class breakout and can even set up caps to what's ultimately exposed to that workers' compensation policy. Again, as we code time into the system, pulling it over from that exact time application, that policy is already set up. So the system's gonna do the legwork for us, make the calculations, have a nice report that we can run, see where we stand against that policy. Next slide here, what also comes with that construction payroll is the construction specific reporting uh, that needs to be generated with certain jobs here. So again, that prevailing wage work or you know maybe union work, you need certified payroll reports here. And have over 40 different print versions of that certified payroll report. There's a spot for it on the certified report. There's a spot for it to be tracked into the system. No manual entry of those certified reports. The system's gonna automatically generate those reports for us. I'll show an example of that as well once we hop into the system here in a moment. Then also too, just like those certified payroll reports, gonna have electronic and print options available for my EEO, minority compliance reports. I'm also gonna have job labor, burden cost, uh, a specific reports inside the system where again, all these reports are gonna automatically calculate where you stand as we're coding time into the system for our payroll runs. Then whenever you need that report to be ran, going to be available to you with a click of a button inside that database there. Then also too, that workers' compensation report, will get that policy set up inside the system, have a nice workers' compensation report that can be generated by your team. Also too, with our reports, PDF, Word, Excel, CSV, very easy to pull them outside the system if we ever need to send them off where they need to go. Then two, uh, any contractors out there that are working with a, a 401k uh, um, vendor, or maybe you also have a health insurance vendor that we're working to uh, working with as well for our employees. So we'll be able to set up that 401k deduction, also able to handle if there's any employer matches for that 401k amount, then also have that automatically withheld from the employee stub, then have a nice report that'll be generated to show us where we currently stand with those 401k amounts. Then two, my contractors that are Union, we have that union work where, hey, each month we need to make, cut that check to the union, also show what the employee's earnings, deductions, fringes, everything that was going on per that union contract with our employees. We'll have that information set up inside the system. Then once it comes time to make the payment to the union, send that report over, also going to be available to you with a click of a button inside that system. Then the last reporting uh, that we handle here at Payroll for Construction Anyone out there that has employees with a child support, other garnishments like alimony, tax garnishment, will also be able to have that garnishment set up automatically withheld from the employee's pay. Then our team does offer the service where after that garnishment is withheld, our team would then handle the reporting of those garnishment wages where they need to go. Next slide here, then still at our core, we are going to be that third party full service payroll provider. So be able to handle those traditional payroll service items, paying the employees via check or direct deposit. Then we'll handle the tax filings and payments when it comes to payroll, the weekly, monthly, quarterly, annual tax filings. You can handle payments to federal, state, local authorities, FUDA, and SUDA. 
well as handle those quarterly and annual returns um, for your team. Then also to have the W-2 and other year-end service um, offerings here at the company. So uh, if anyone here were to move forward with the payroll service in the middle of the year, our team, before we take you live, would make sure that all payroll history, what you've done so far this year, is up to date inside your system. So then when it comes W-2 time, employees would only receive one W-2 from payroll for construction. What else makes us different? Uh, again, we're going to have that integration with QuickBooks and other accounting programs out there like Sage, uh, Acumatica, other items out there. We will be able to integrate with that accounting system. Or if there's anyone on the webinar here today that's a current foundation accounting client processing that payroll through foundation, or maybe you're outsourcing to a different provider, our, our service is built directly into that accounting system. So we have direct integrations um, with whatever current accounting package you are utilizing. Then again, our team only focused on the construction industry. You'll have a staff of professionals that are trained only on our system, that are trained in-house here, that will be able to assist if any items, any issues come up with payroll, you have any questions, we're only working with the construction industry, be able to assist if anything, if you ever have any questions regarding that database here. Then the next line item here, that main one, especially with that exact time, a uh, uh, mobile application here. Gonna be able to utilize a time card import feature where once I jump into the system here in a moment, I'll show us how we can simply pull that configured file out of the exact time application and pull it in to your payroll for construction database. Then also with that payroll for construction system, online web-based access anytime, anywhere with an internet connection, go ahead, log in with your username and password. You then have access to that payroll database. Then also too, after payroll is processed, we do also offer an online stub portal for those employees to log in online, receive their pay stubs electronically, um, so you're not having to mail out or send out any direct deposit stubs to those employees there, do have the ability to access those online there. Then what I'll do here, oh, I actually do have one more slide, my apologies. So how a payroll is processed with the system. Simply go ahead, log in online. We're then gonna enter or in this case, import those time cards over from the exact time mobile application. Then, then we'll have a number of reports where you can review your time card entries, review those payroll calculations, where you stand if you were to submit to processing for us here. At that time, then once everything looks good to go here, simply go ahead, click submit payroll with a click of a button. Within the hour, our team processes that payroll. You can walk away. Your payroll tax filings and payments, your employees will all be paid and handled for that week. All right, perfect. So what I will do here next then is I will minimize this and we'll go ahead and jump into the payroll for construction database here. So then with this system, again, we designed you a trainer. They're gonna build this system from the ground up to only house the information that your team needs for those payroll runs. So inside payroll maintenance, those employees that we had onboarded through our Coro system, they're gonna be imported into that system, automatically set up, available for you to go ahead it record time against those employee records inside the database. Also, we'll set up that workers' compensation policy here inside the system. But here at the bottom, it's where you're gonna see the construction specific language that separates our payroll service from other service providers out there, where for those that have that union work, that prevailing wage work, where we need to set up those pay rates, track those benefits that we're being required to offer for our employees here. We'll have tables behind the scenes where we can stamp them, whether it's your union you're working with or that prevailing wage job we're working with, where we then set up that table, hey, based on that contract, the type of work, the trade that my employee's under, what that rate of pay needs to be. Set this up behind the scene, it's tied to the job record. The system will automatically be able to pull in the corresponding rate of pay. And also too, we're able to time stamp these tables with effective dates where, hey, on the first of the year, Here's that union contract. Here's what we, the benefits, the pay rates that we need to provide to these employees. But later on this year, hey, maybe on June 1st, we're gonna have another pay rate change that's occurring. Everyone's getting a dollar raise on that contract or some items are being changed. We can go ahead, get that upcoming contract loaded into the system and we'll timestamp it with that upcoming effective date. So if that change happens in the middle of a payroll run, the system will automatically be able to look, utilize that effective date pull in the corresponding rate of pay, benefits, tracking for our employees there. 
So again, we'll have that construction specific language that we can control, kind of streamline the process of what we need to track for your team's type of work there. Again, our team can set up these union, these prevailing wage tables for you as a payroll for construction client. Send it over to our team. Again, we're only dealing with the construction industry. Be able to get these items set up for you behind the scenes in that database. Then two, inside that job costing maintenance. So to be able to course correctly uh, calculate the time, also generate those certified payroll reports, would want your jobs to be set up inside that system here. We'll also import your list of cost codes. So then once those jobs are available inside the system here, we then come over into payroll daily. Inside the enter time card screen, inside payroll daily is where we're going to then pull that time in from the exact time mobile application. So your trainer, someone from our team would go ahead inside the enter time cards. They're gonna set up the exact time import file layout here where you select the exact time import, go ahead and click okay. Then what your team would do here is up at the top, come up, select import. Then for the exact time integration, there's a one time import sequence that our team will set up for you. So the only thing that your team's responsible for is clicking that import button, select and browse. We'll pick where that file was saved on our computer for that week's payroll. Go ahead, bring it into the system. We'll get a small little preview here at the bottom of that data. But once I click finish, system would let me know if there were any errors when it was bringing the hours into the system here. Then our hours have been entered. And you'll notice on this screen that we brought in those employees, cost codes, job, hours, earn codes, all coming over from the exact time application. Then the items that are grayed out here, once I come up and click OK, the system is then going to do the legwork for me, be able to correspondingly assign those prevailing wage rates based on the trade my employee is working. Uh, Go ahead and it will distinguish the information, also assign the corresponding tax tables, be able to do the legwork, assign the rates, the calculations of what we need to then bring in from the hours that we brought over from the exact time application. Then once those hours are saved here, again, gonna have a number of reports that you can use to check where those stand before our teams ever touches it for processing. So a time card list proofing report, a number of pre-check registers to allow, allow us to review the hours, see where the calculations stand. Then once we're good to go, go ahead and click Submit Payroll, send it over to our team for processing. We'll handle the paying of the employees, those tax filings and payments. Then after payroll's ready, good to go here. The last spot that we'll jump into here today for our, our, uh, our little demonstration is our payroll report section. So Inside your payroll for construction database here, a number of reports that are available to you to utilize as a payroll client. You use them, you use them. If you don't, you don't. They're all included as a payroll for construction client here. So our workers' compensation report here, gonna have then electronic print versions of those EEO minority compliance reports. So have the federal upload here for the electronic. Also for those print formats, gonna have the generic, but state and city specific that our team is managing the formats, the layouts of these templates for you as a client. Well, if something changes on the reports, our team will update it behind the scenes inside your system as your payroll service provider. Then the other ones here, those certified payroll reports here. So again, going to have electronic and print options here. Those that are maybe working with the California DIR for the uploads, Astroware, eMars, or the LCP tracker here, go ahead and select that version that you need for the certified report, we click OK. Then we'll go ahead, put in the date range of that payroll that we need for that certified report, where we want this to be saved on our computer, then we're creating the XLS file that's getting uploaded into LCP Tracker for you. So once I run this report, it looks like a jumbled mess of information that we really can't read, but again, we're creating that file upload. So what you then do, you click close, File has not been created, create now. You click yes, save that file to your desktop. Go ahead, log in online to the online portal for those certifieds, upload that file. Your certified is then good to go. Again, no manual entry of certified payroll information. If there's a spot for it on the report, there's a spot for it to be tracked inside the system. Going to be the same thing for those certified payroll print options here as well. With the certified payroll print, 
Again, put in your date range, go ahead and select the format that we need for our reports. Like I've mentioned, over 40 different print options that our team is managing the actual layouts. If something is changed, is updated, our team will make those revisions, update them inside your system. Just quickly scroll through the options for those on the call here today. Then for my demonstration here today, go ahead and jump in to that generic U.S. Department of Labor WH-347 here. You can even create no work performed certifieds for us. Whatever we may need on that certified report, the system's going to automatically pull in this information for us. Then again, spot for it on a certified, spot for it to be tracked inside of our system. Then as I get here to the bottom, we'll be able to still also generate those signature pages. So then once you're good to go, PDF it, pull it outside the system, sign it, send it off where it needs to go. Again, to a number of other reports available inside the system. The last big one that I'll jump in today here will be our union reporting for my, my union contractors here on the call here today. So again, go ahead, put in the date, check date range that we want this to be ran for once I run that report. We'll then pull all of our unions that we're working with inside the system, show us broken out by trade, who had hours, deductions, fringes recorded under that trade. Give me a summary broken out by trade here. Again, broken out by trade, showing me my apprentices here. Then give me a summary of that trade as well inside the union. Then the last page, giving me the overall union summary report for my local six here. All right, here's the bottom line. Here's what I need to cut the check for. PDF it, pull it outside the system, attach the check, send it off to the union. You're good to go there. There is no unions out there that payroll for construction will not be able to work with. We have union contractors processing payroll, working in all 50 states here as a client of the payroll service. All right, so again, those that on the call that have some interest in the payroll service hold live one-on-one -on -one demonstrations over the Zoom platform. So if anyone wants, wants to get a more custom tailored, uh, have any specific payroll questions for your team, be happy to set up a time to walk you through a more in-depth overview of payroll for construction here. What I'll do next is I'll jump back into the slide deck here, and then I'll invite Brian May to join me back on the call here um, so we can wrap this up and then open it up to questions um, for those in the audience here today. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Alex, great job. Always awesome working with you. Um, when when looking at the, the benefits of the Arcoro onboarding and, and time tracking software, I think, you know, first off, we have a number of opportunities in the construction industry that we need to tackle. That is the meaningful work that we need to focus our attention to. So that onboarding system, what it does is it, it helps you focus your attention on more meaningful work and not the mechanics of HR and onboarding, not the paper, not the data entry, not the chasing people down to get incomplete information or to translate their handwriting. So, you know, number one benefit again, helps you focus on more meaningful work, not the mechanics of, of HR and people process. Um, on the time tracking piece, listen, here's what I hear, all right, from, from contractors on time tracking. Many of you are still doing timesheets after the fact. They tend to get done daily, maybe sometimes just in time for payroll. They always look the same. It's amazing. Nobody came in late, nobody left early right? Everybody's time is the same. What many contractors come to question is legitimacy of the data and the information. And what they find is that they're overpaying on payroll, their job cost information is inaccurate, and they, they, can't, they can't win future bids with inaccurate job cost information. So having exact time uh, really does help us lower our payroll costs and improve job costing and win more projects in the future with better estimates. Alex? Great stuff there, Brian. And the benefits that we're gonna see with payroll for construction here is we're gonna have that efficient payroll processing by our staff that again, we're only dealing with the construction industry and also eliminates those confusing tax filings as you're outsourcing that liability to our team as your payroll service provider. So we'll make sure that those filings and payments are made on time and correctly, and ultimately that liability is transferred to our team. 
then the biggest portion when it comes to that construction payroll is the construction specific reporting that we need. So the system's going to automate those union reports, that certified payroll, EEO, minority compliance reporting, also job cost reports for us. So no more making these calculations by hand, trying to manage it maybe inside of an Excel spreadsheet here. System's going to automate these reports for us, have them available at a click of a button whenever we may need to utilize those reports there. All right, so then if I don't have anything else on my end, Brian, I'm not sure if you had anything else before we wanted we to open up the questions. Yeah, we got questions. Got questions. So, looks like there's several for you here, and uh, I, I want to start with this one, and maybe you have a little insight for me. I'm going to do some more investigation, but the mm -hmm. question was, how does time tracking, how does the time tracking system work with Foundation Service Dispatch? So we get the time back in. Is there some impact on the dispatch system? Alex, are you aware? I would need some more information on what he's looking with exactly in the service dispatch module as the yeah. way that you're currently going to be utilizing hours entry into your foundation database, the flow of those hours into the service dispatch module or whatever you're utilizing inside that module is going to stay the same as we're still bringing those hours into your foundation database, that payroll module, and the way that you're having those hours or whatever's touching that service dispatch module now would stay the same with the exact time application as we're still bringing them into the system, reviewing the hours and the calculations before it's then sent over and hitting that module inside your system. Yeah, and I think, you know, um, help, helping us understand what you'd like it to do, uh, shoot us an email, Alex and I will run down the, the answers and we can circle back with you offline on that question. Right. So it looks like, Brian, that there's some other ones in here for you as well. Um, for another one, it looks like, can you pick other employees other than the ones on the crew list when clocking in on the exact time mobile application there? Yeah. Okay. So I was demonstrating uh, during the, the, the lunch and learn the supervisor clock for, right? Clock for a crew. And now the question is, what if I got a new person on my crew? Or what if someone isn't on the crew? Can I bring someone into the crew and clock time for them? The answer is yes. Um, it is a configurable option. You can give your supervisors access to the employee roster, and that would allow them to go and search for an employee that is now working on that crew to track time for. So that, uh, that does work well. Uh, Alex, here's one for you. Uh, what happens if I need to cut a layoff check in the middle of a pay period for an employee? Great question, great question. Yes, yeah, so my union contractors out there, you know, maybe got to lay an employee off in the middle of the week or anyone out there that has that off-cycle one-time check in the middle of a payroll run, not an issue with the service. We'd have an off-cycle pay period that you'd be able to go in, cut that layoff check, you could print it outside the database at that point in time, get that employee paid. Then the next time that our team processes the full payroll run for your team, We'll be able to see the one-time layoff check information. We'll make sure that all taxing amounts, uh, everything is up to date with what went on in that layoff check. So not an issue um, with the payroll service here. Awesome. Thank you for that. I, I just, we got to share this comment that came in. Um, just says, very pleased with the information presented. Current user, our Coro and foundation with payroll for construction satisfied with what is offered but definitely feel like they're they're not optimizing it so um oscar happy to happy to help you there when when you're ready uh this next question is for you alex um you've seen exact time right can you can you share the difference between that and foundation mobile yeah so uh with the difference between exact time and foundation mobile uh I'll say with exact times mobile application, um, do know that the exact time mobile application does have um, some more features when it comes to the, the GPS, the GPS tracking um, portion of the employees where in foundation mobile, regardless if they're inside that job release or outside, they're gonna be able to clock in as it's only pinging their exact location of where they're at. But if there's those that are looking for more specific restrictions. Hey, that employee's not in the job site. I don't even want him to be able to clock in. Exact time is going to have some more 
robust features, uh, some better feature sets when it comes to the, the uh, GPS tracking side of that mobile application. That is the one main difference I'd see between the two products there from my experience. And I would just say the difference from my perspective is your foundation mobile is part of foundation. So that's a, that's that a too. huge difference. Um, Alex, let's keep going. Here's another one for you. Uh, we we work we typically work across multiple states and or loca localities uh, in any given pay week. Is this something payroll for construction can handle? Yep. Again, head covered during the webinar there. Uh, on that time card, going to be able to have an unlimited number of rates, states, jobs, all on one time card for the employees. And once you submit that over to us, we're processing payroll in all 50 states. So our team will be able to handle the multi-state, the multi-locality reporting for you as a payroll for construction client. And then what I will say, Brian, to kind of piggyback off that question there, looks like we have another one um, regarding multiple states. Um, so for the Acoro side, they work in multiple states there as well. How are state tax forms collected or assigned um, inside your product? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So tax forms are dictated by the position and the location where we're hiring that individual. So our Coro does have all state tax forms. We keep them all up to date. And then once you pick that position and location that you're hiring that individual, the appropriate forms are populated so that that employee can fill that, that state tax form out. Um, I would just say that the only exception to that is if the employee is living in, in one state and working in another, the employee can opt to, to fill out the tax form for their, their living state. So lots of flexibility there and happy to get into that in more detail. Um, Alex, we are at the end of our session for today. We're at that hard stop. For those of you that still had questions and we didn't get to them, sorry about that. We will circle back with you um, uh, uh, after the fact and, and get, help you get some answers. Alex, it's always great working with you. Everyone have a great rest of your week. Alex, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, always great working with you as well. And I'd like to thank again everyone that was on the call here today. Any questions, anything we can do to help our infos here, please don't hesitate to reach out. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye, everyone.